All right, so as investors, it's super important to know what's going on in politics, right? Because these people that are running things are changing our lives and the world. So you just got to know, right? Because because it'll protect your portfolio, which is why I'm happy to welcome my guest host, Thor Skanky, to help guide us through a lot of these political headlines. Thank you very much for having me. So obviously, you know, this show is not political at all. It's not right or left. You know, they're both pretty much terrible. But you know, it's about the people. It's like, what can the people learn and use with this type of information? So here's just one headline. Biden is considering shutting down another oil pipeline despite soaring energy prices. Republicans demand Michigan's Line 5 be kept open to avoid a further rise in energy bills this winter. Thor, what is your take on that? I have no idea what this guy is doing. I mean, like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, none of his fiscal policy or not even just his policies in general just seem like it's just a catastrophe. You know, he, he hasn't done one thing where I, I can really, like, point my finger and say, oh, I, I see why he's doing that. That's that's a great idea. You know, gas is too expensive. It's just really simple. You know, you make it harder to get a, a resource and that resource becomes more expensive. I mean, that's just the way things work. And um, they're making it a lot harder for us to get our get our oil. And uh, we're going to feel it at the pump. Um, I did, you know, I did notice there was like a smirk on the face of, uh, and you know, it sucks. I'm not even, a, I don't even really remember what the lady's name, but she was uh, one of the politicians that are in Biden's cabinet. And they were talking to her about the prices of oil. And she says, well, I guess more people have to get electric cars and kind of smirked, you know? And I'm like, is that the game? Is that like the end goal? Because that's like, it's, it's pretty stupid. You know what I mean? Um, to manufacture a uh, gas shortage so that people are forced to buy electric cars. But I mean, oil is used for so many things, you know, uh, it, it's directly tied to inflation in every single product that you have is, is tied to oil, you know? So I, I don't get it. Um, I don't know why he would do something like that. Um, it seems like he should really, uh, if he wants, maybe, maybe he doesn't, maybe he knows he's not going to be around for reelection for some reason, you know, declining health. And he's just like, F it, you know, let me just go as, as, as uh, radical as possible um, and have fun, I guess, in my last remaining years, you know, because it's, uh, it's wild. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. You, know, you need a smarter guy than me to, to, to answer that question. But it does kind of speak to rising oil prices, right? It seems pretty obvious at this point, right? Yeah. I, I, think, think. I, think, I think we, uh, we figured out the, uh, the culprit when it comes to rising oil prices. You know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. if we're going to talk about Biden, let's talk about the other side, which is Trump. Yeah. Is there anything you feel negative about Trump? The guy just won't shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, like, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't have to come out and say like general, we would have won Afghanistan if general E Lee was, was uh, leading our troops. You know what I mean? Like we, he didn't need to say some shit like that. Like why, why would you, I just don't understand why they do stuff like when you when you look at these politicians, you think like oh, these guys are above average intelligence, you know, and like their whole job is to speak. And they know every single word that they say will be not only like heard, but analyzed. And they come out and they say some of the stupidest shit I've ever heard. You know what I mean? Um, like I definitely put more thought into what I'm doing right now at four, nine a.m. with you than. I think Trump's all of his tweets combined. I, I don't understand the guy. I don't know why he would say stuff like that. It's like he shoots himself in the foot and he purposely tries to polarize himself when he can be. I think he could have been a uniting figure, just like I think Biden could have been a uniting figure. You know, um, no, not as much. as I think Biden, is, I think he, even though he's a very milquetoast persona compared to Trump, he's uh, his p policies are very radical. But if you look at Trump, his policies were not radical. He was just radical as a person. Like, I think Trump could have actually been a very uniting figure, but he really shoots himself in the foot every single day when he not even opens his mouth and gets on his Twitter. You know, I, I don't understand it. So, you know, as a small business owner that you are, as a humble guy, hardworking, you know, man of the people, I want to get your take on kind of the inflation picture. And here's one headline. Inflation is making voters unhappy with the economy. Democrats hope their infrastructure and social bills change that. So I just want to get your thoughts on inflation, how it's impacting you, if at all, and kind of like what you see going forward for all this. So the way I look at politics is people don't really care unless it affects them, right? Like, yeah, uh, you know, I don't, you know, you hear about wars, you know, uh, that's in Serbia, that's in 
Middle East, that's that uh, doesn't affect me. Right. And then it doesn't really affect the way you vote. Um, I think a grave mistake that a lot of these uh, people on the left have made is one, they lost com- touch with the common person. Like they have no idea, you know, it's almost like they, they're willfully ignorant towards what these people uh, think and feel, you know, a lot of these people uh, have savings that they, they live on, they have set budgets. It's life or death for them. So when they see now it's affecting everybody, you know, from like, you know, suburban moms, um, uh, people on pensions, you know, they're seeing the prices raise, right. They go, if you, I don't care how rich you are. Uh, if you go to the gas pump and you feel some kind of way about it after you leave, you're not rich. You know what I mean? Like if you can't do basic things like fill up your gas tank up being like, Oh man, that's terrible. Right. If you go, you want to buy a gallon of milk and it's like three bucks now, you know what I mean? And you have a family that like, they, this isn't stuff you can like hold back on. You know what I mean? This is things you have to buy. Um, I think it's going to be disastrous for whoever's in charge right now, you know, um, putting the blame aside from whatever, you know, you could blame, we're going to look at the person who's in charge and I can't blame the last guy for today anymore i mean that's over so yeah i'm like i i i really think everybody's affected by this you know um this is something that's affecting everybody it's not the border crisis it's not uh afghanistan it's not i mean this is the war at home and uh it should it should be an interesting 2022 i'll just say that much so i know that you follow aoc on twitter i don't can you just give us some insight into what's kind of going on on that spectrum of of the political world anything that really piqued your interest recently AOC, nothing interests me. She's um, she's attractive. <laughs> you know, um, she means well. I think, though. You know, you think? Yeah, I think she means well. I I just think she's just you know, a lot of her ideals only work on on paper. You know, it's interesting because I think that is that could be a future political party. It could be a future political movement. We don't know how powerful it is. It does seem to be creeping into a lot of the uh, corporate media. So just every, everything is just so, you know, we have to pay for the sins of the past before we can move on as a people. It just seems like, you know, everything is, and the, the rich are responsible for every problem. You know, like the most interesting thing I've, I've, I've heard recently was uh, this is actually Joe Biden, you know, but this is from, the far left that he's pandering to, you know, saying he said the wealthy didn't build this country. It was the middle class, right? Which is on its face, like a very stupid thing to say because no one starts off wealthy for, for the most part, the people that become wealthy didn't start off that way. There, yes, there is generational wealth. I understand that. But all, if you build this country, what happens to you in turn is you become wealthy, right? A lot of people like, you know, they come to this country like I'm a son of immigrants. You know what I mean? Like you come to this country, you're poor. Right. And then you, you, you work your way up to the middle class. And then by the end, if you made enough good decisions, you're wealthy. Right. This is the incentive to build this country. OK. Um, most of the people I know that uh, that come in and are already wealthy are, are uh, fucking losers, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? They just sit back and they, they you know, they take advantage of already being gifted this and that and they do drugs and they just kind of like play out the remainder of the football game, you know, two minute warning up 48 points, you know, like they're, they're done there. There's no, there's no drive. There's no reason to score a touchdown. It's, it's over, you know, take a couple knees. That's it. Most Kings are not born in castles. Okay. They claw their way into it, you know? And um, I mean, this is what motivates me every day to get up and, and, and get it in, you know? And, um, you know, when you hear things like uh, the wealthy didn't build this country, like, yeah, but they became wealthy because they built this country, you know, and um, <laughs> that innovation, that 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 drive, that carrot at the end of the stick is the reason why America is what it is. And the fact that we're fighting, these people are fighting so hard to erode that um, it doesn't bode well for uh, for the future, you know, when I hear things like that. Um, you were an early viewer of this channel and you doubled your money in uranium. What was the thought process behind that? I see uranium as being the most efficient way to power things, regardless of the stigma that it has for being, you know, associated with nuclear catastrophes, which are completely avoidable and 
should stop happening. But I, I looked at it like right now we're having like an oil, oil crisis and, you know, um, wind and solar are still not as efficient as, as obviously uranium. So I just thought get ahead of the curve and just invest everything in uranium. And yesterday, uh, DNN went from a dollar. No, it was like 87 cents when I bought it to over $2, you know, so it was a good day. And so what do you think about these two headlines? So Tim Cook, Apple CEO, says he owns cryptocurrency, but also George Soros's fund owns Bitcoin, CEO confirms. What do you think of that? Which cryptocurrency? This, uh... Oh, just, I mean, I'm sure just Bitcoin and Ethereum. They don't know anything about the others, I'm sure. Not yet. Yeah, I mean, um, this is where they say the rich get richer, you know? It's just like, yep. imagine, like we can all kind of see where this is going. You know, there are like a few people I still talk to. I'm mean, not even a few people. We're at, we're a lot of people. You talk to them about this and they give you this blank look. You know, I even had, I had multiple people tell me it's the antichrist. They're like, you know, blockchain is the antichrist. Bitcoin is probably the antichrist because, you know, it, it makes sense. You know, you don't know, we don't know who made it. We don't know where this technology came from. The guy's completely anonymous. Like, who would be anonymous about this, you know? But the guy's completely anonymous. Like, somebody just came out and said, hey, there's this thing called the blockchain, invented it, and then dipped. So I hear all kinds of weird conspiracy theories. People don't trust it yet. And I, I think it's not until people really start doing transactions with Bitcoin that they're going to understand what it really is. So we're like in the, we're in the, in the beginning. We're in the, really, even though it's worth $66,000 right now, we're the, in, in like the inception phase. But there's a lot of people that have millions of dollars at their disposal that are sitting there and, and already seeing. I mean, like, dude, if you work for Apple, if you're the, I mean, come on, like, if you're the head of Apple, you should really, like, see where this is going and understand the blockchain in a way that most people don't. And, like, this administration it seems like they're doing everything they can to, like, make our dollar worthless, right? And I'm like, it seems... We're just one step away from people being able to walk into stores with their cell phone and say, like, I'd like to pay for this in Bitcoin. I'd like to pay for this in Satoshis. I'd like to, you know, I'm going to send you Bitcoin. You're going to send me Bitcoin. They're sending, there's millions of transactions going, going on every single day. It's not just like a, a pump and dump, which is what the media wants you to think. Like, it's some kind of, like, volatile investment. You know, people just invest in Bitcoin. No, they use it to make transactions every single day, to buy groceries. All over the world, people are using this technology, this blockchain technology all over all over the world. It's a force of nature now. It has, humans have no bearing on what the blockchain is or what it will be or, or any of that. Well, you know what is interesting about the blockchain? Everything on it is tracked and verifiable and you don't have to worry. There's no, there's no, you don't need any faith. It's like, this is exactly what is on this ledger. It's recorded. How do you think that could tie into Biden's dream of ta of tracking everyone's transactions over six hundred dollars? Yeah, I think it's um, IRS is it's their it's their dream, you know. But I, I just think they need to people need to start taking it seriously now. I think that was that was the thing is maybe the Fed didn't take our blockchain seriously before it became a worldwide phenomenon, and now they can't stop it. This discussion is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this discussion should be taken as investment advice. Guests are not compensated for their appearance. Do not base any investment decisions on the information presented.